Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. During the years of the Civil War, more than 11% of Vermont men answered the call to serve the Union Army. It was the second highest percentage of any state. But consider that about 20% of black men in Vermont, the highest percentage in the country, also joined. When the war started, blacks could not fight. They could only enlist as servants to white officers. All that changed with the establishment of the 54th Regiment Massachusetts Volunteer Army. It was the first black regiment organized in northern states during the Civil War. The Vermonters who served in this regiment gained glory and honor for their service and sacrifice. Today, Vermont historian Howard Coffin takes us from north to south following in the footsteps of these brave Vermonters. On a spring day in 1861, the Woodstock Light Infantry Company stood at attention here in front of the Windsor County Courthouse. But if you look closely, all the faces are white. Despite the fact that 60 black people lived in Woodstock in 1861, when the Civil War began, blacks could not serve. But that would change. 11 Woodstock men would serve, black men, many of them in the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, the most famous of all black regiments. Charles Wentworth had a barber shop in a cellar room here along Woodstock Central Street. He opened it after he came home from the Civil War. Wentworth was born in slavery in Louisiana. He was freed by the 7th Vermont Regiment and he came home with the 7th and then he enlisted to fight for freedom in the 54th Massachusetts. After the war he came to Woodstock to become a barber and a member of the local GAR post. Down South Street from the Village Square is Valefield. On Sundays in the 50s, my father and I used to come here to watch the town team play baseball, and they were good. We had a lot of fun, but I always kept getting distracted by the noise coming from a house across the street, the Lewis family house. The blacks from all around this area on their day off gathered there for a party. And sometimes it seemed like they were having a lot more fun than I was having. The music, the laughter, the joy was wonderful. And later I learned that a Civil War soldier, Austin Hazard, lived in that house. He served in the 54th Massachusetts, but he was one of those three Woodstock lads who went early in the war as servants to officers, the only way he could serve. The Miro brothers, Andrew, Charles, Edward, and Sylvester, lived in that red brick house here along South Street where most of Woodstock's blacks lived. Those four boys, as far as I know, all fought in the Battle of Olusti in Florida which happened in January of 1864. It was a vicious battle, though a small one. About 10,000 men engaged. The men who fought said it was some of the fiercest fighting of the Civil War. The Union force that day was saved by the rear guard actions of the 54th Massachusetts and the 35th U.S. Colored Troops. It was dangerous business because blacks were always under threat when they were at war. And as those black regiments protected the Union retreat, the wounded, so the story goes, were killed by the Confederates. Eighteen sixty-five was a dying year in Woodstock. Disease swept through the town and of course there were the Civil War dead coming home. River Street Cemetery has Civil War graves everywhere. There are the famous, like Thomas Seaver, who won a Medal of Honor at Spotsylvania Courthouse on May 10, 1864, 
leading a charge that briefly broke the Confederate lines. And then there's the more modest stone of Charles Wentworth, the barber. He lived to be 79, dying in 1893. Behind him is a smaller stone for his son, Charles Jr., who also was a barber with his father, but he only lived six years after the Civil War. He died of TB, contracted when he was in the Army in the 54th Massachusetts. If you look closely, you'll find the graves of black soldiers in cemeteries throughout Vermont, including a very prominent cemetery in Burlington. I often walk in Burlington's Lakeview Cemetery looking for Civil War graves. There's a remarkable grouping of Gettysburg heroes here, including George Jerison Stannard, who led the 2nd Vermont Brigade in its attack on Pickett's Charge. Walking one day in the direction that he gazes, I found a group of black soldiers' graves along the cemetery's south wall. Black Vermonters who served in the Civil War served in eight different colored regiments as they were known at the time. Here in this plot at Lakeview, there are at least four black soldiers, members of the famous 54th Massachusetts and one member of the 43rd U.S. Colored Infantry, which fought at the famous Battle of the Crater at Petersburg. Israel Freeman fought at the Battle of the Crater and then came to live in Burlington. William Davis in the 54th Massachusetts lived in St. Albans and was said to have harbored fugitive slaves. He was a member of the standard post of the GAR after the war and marched in many Memorial Days as did Leander Freeman of the 54th Massachusetts, who lies here. He was wounded late in the war in fighting in South Carolina. I didn't know of these soldiers until I found them here at Lakeview, but I certainly knew of Vermont's best known black soldier who lived in Hinesburg on Lincoln Hill. Loudon Langley lived in this house on Lincoln Hill. He farmed here before the Civil War. As soon as he could, he and his brothers, Lewis and Newell, enlisted in the 54th Massachusetts. Loudon Langley eventually transferred from the 54th to the 33rd U.S. Colored Infantry, and there he rose to the rank of Sergeant Major, the highest rank that a black man could hold in the Civil War. Indeed, I believe that had he been a white man, he probably would have been a colonel, maybe a general. We're standing just up the hill from the Langley House in the old cemetery that was the center of the black community. The graveyard has long been abandoned. There are no stones, just fragments. Here's one right here with some carving on it. Loudon Langley, during the war, in one of his letters to the editor wrote, the boys are all pleased with the draft because they think it more than fair for all to share in the perils of the fight, as well as the blessings of the perfect, peaceful liberty that is sure to follow. But so many of the freedoms that had been won in the Civil War would soon be lost as Jim Crow descended on the South. Yet the noble fight made by black soldiers in the Civil War is not forgotten, particularly at the St. Gaudens historic site just across the river in New Hampshire. This is the home of Augustus St. Gaudens one of America's great sculptors. He had grown up in New York City. As a boy, he had heard Abraham Lincoln speak at the Cooper Union Institute. He had seen Abraham Lincoln lying in state at New York City Hall. After the Civil War, he did a 
statue of Admiral Farragut that made him nationally famous. And when it came time to memorialize the 54th Massachusetts Regiment and its commander, Robert Gould Shaw, St. Gaudens was chosen. That regiment, which was raised around Boston by abolitionists, Frederick Douglass' sons were in it, became the first black Union regiment to go into heavy combat on the 18th of July, 1863, at Fort Wagner in South Carolina. And when they attacked in the late afternoon, a massive Confederate fortress, they didn't have a chance, but they knew that the reputation of blacks as fighters rested with them, and they did magnificent duty and won glory at heavy casualties. St. Gaudens decided to depict black soldiers exactly as they looked. And this is the first monumental depiction with accurate black features in it. It showed Shaw, Colonel Shaw, leading his men through Boston, marching to the ships that would take them south to the war zone. Not long after the unveiling in Boston in 1897, the great sculptor Auguste Rodin saw a model of this monument, and on seeing it, he fell to one knee, bowing in reverence. Thank you, Howard. And once again, thank you for joining us. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay safe.